It's time. Now here's your host, Dr. Cheryl Shire. Hello and welcome to Your Prescription for Health and Wealth. I'm Dr. Cheryl and in today's uncharted journey through the pandemic restrictions and the opposing unprecedented possibilities, there is creativity bursting, innovation bursting. We are sharing guests, gifts, and compassionate messages to wake up those that have been asleep, also including ourselves on some level. Now is the time for ingenious, positive, nurturing, and healing reinforcement. Everyone has a gift to share. Let's ignite the desire and the fortitude to make it happen. And today's show is about Mother Earth and goddesses, the, in, the divine goddess, and the divine goddess in the divine masculine as well. And our special guest is Mayor Cromwell, and she is a humble servant to the Great Mother, the Gaia communicator, priestess, healer, international speaker, and award-winning author. Welcome, welcome, Mayor, and thank you for being with us. Thank you. Tell, thank us, you. tell us about where you came from and how you got to where you are now. I know that's well, a loaded question. Yeah, that, that could be like three years here. Um, I'll be <laughs> succinct. I have been studying with Native American teachers for more than 25 years. And in early June of 2012, four days after I was diagnosed with lymphoma, I participated, just two of us, uh, in a ceremony with a very gifted Algonquin man that... Earth Mother or Mother Gaia had requested that we do. And she had requested this about a month prior to that, before I knew of my diagnosis. And when I met with this Algonquin man to do the ceremony, and I was adamant that I was going to be there, regardless of how I was freaking out about this cancer diagnosis. When we started the ceremony, he said to me, I'm going to be bringing uh, Gaia's energy and consciousness into your energy body, but I don't know how you're going to disconnect. And my response to him was, I'm not concerned because I know my life is to serve mother. And right after that, as soon as the ceremony was over, mother started talking to me incredibly clearly, just the way you might be hearing a friend over a coffee table speaking very clearly to you. And how could you disconnect when you, when you have that message? <laughs> I know. I know it's so true. Um, so what mother told me was that if I surrendered to her to the extent that she was going to ask me to surrender, she would help me heal from the lymphoma without the doctors. And of course I said yes, because I was yes. freaking out and I oh, didn't yeah. want to go through uh, chemotherapy or really intense meds. Uh, I have a very sensitive system. And so things started to accelerate very fast after that. And she spiritually called me to the ocean. I live in Maryland, so she called me to do ceremony there for a couple of days shortly after the ceremony with the Algonquin man. And when I did that, uh, she started talking to me very, very, she was talking to me very clearly. Actually, my car on the way to the ocean, I filled it up and I watched the gas gauge stay on full for 110 miles <laughs> while I'm driving to the ocean. And I'm looking at this going, this is really weird. And oh no, now I'm going to have a synchronicity of spirit. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I said to mother after it started to go down normally after 110 miles, it you know, went down normally. And I thought, oh, phew, I don't need to go to the mechanics to get it fixed. I was living off my savings. But I said to her, I said, are you? doing this and her response was this is so you can trust me oh, i'm taking yeah. care of you oh boy i can relate to that that with my relationship with with you know my god self goddess self because it's like okay i have another another testing proof <laughs> and proof yeah. after proof after proof yeah Sorry. i mean yeah. miracles abound 
They yes. just have found When you're aware, to... when you're open. Yeah. But when your car goes an extra 110 miles, oh, you yeah. know, I had another story I won't get into right now when I was writing the Great Mother Bible where, I mean, I'll just mention it briefly. Um, getting ahead of myself here, but mother asked me basically when I went to the beach uh, on that trip where the gas gauge stayed on full, when I got there and started doing ceremonies, she said, I want you to write this book. I want you to put your other book aside that you're working on. And she gave me the title. She gave me the table of contents and she gave me the first message. And the title of the book is messages from mother earth mother. And the very first message she gave me was to us women, her daughters. It was a call to us to reconnect with her. Very beautiful message. Um, but that book was written in five weeks that summer, as soon as I got back yeah. from the beach. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was intense. I was the just so tight. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was so tight with my, I still am, but oh my gosh, it was just pouring through. And then as soon as the manuscript was done, mother's like, and now you need to publish it. <laughs> and she knew I knew how to self publish a book because right. I already put out another book 10 years before yeah. called if I gave you God's phone number. So so what happened then is I was focused on my healing work. Um, you know, mother was helping me. I was experiencing miraculous healings by touching trees, uh, spontaneous ceremonies. And then late fall of 2013, a year and a half later, um, I had a gallbladder attack and I had to go back into the doctors who I was avoiding with this adventure with mother. You know, mother was my doctor, you know? Yeah. And so with the CT scan, all the lymph nodes were back to normal. They're all in my abdominal region, which yeah. is a big part of my healing journal journey right. is healing my wounded energy, yeah. all my repressed energies in my womb space. Yeah. And so when I had the CT scan, the doctor was amazed. He's like, how did you do this? Because all your lymph nodes are back to normal other than one that's slightly enlarged. A miracle! I said, well, it's been a journey. Um, but at the same time, just actually a week before that CT scan, mother woke me up at five in the morning and said, I want you to write the great mother Bible now. And I really balked at that because I didn't think that I was the kind of person that could put a book out with the word Bible in the title. Right. And I told mother, I said, I'm really don't think so. I really don't think, I, you know, she kept on just saying, you're the one, you're the one. All you need to do is listen. <clears throat> I said, okay, I've surrendered. I'm, I'm listening. And then January 2nd, 2014, the conversation started. And I want to mention that when they first started, it wasn't, mother Gaia who was talking to me it was actually the great divine mother which blew my mind I could tell it was a different spiritual presence very powerful a different voice and then she passed it over for the conversations to continue between me and mother Gaia and so I put, yeah I put two books out of conversations with mother and then I put Gaia teaches you know messages to mother up on my YouTube channel and sometimes I post on Facebook messages uh, what an honor. It's an adventure. I'm going <laughs> through a quiet phase with her right now. Right now she's saying, focus on the thousand goddesses gathering. I'm taking care of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's the gist of my story. This, this has been quite a journey. And did, I feel you grow, did you grow up in Maryland? I did. And I actually grew up Catholic. Oh, okay. You know, this has been um, a real shedding of the patriarchal religion yeah. to embracing the mother. I mean, I, I don't just embrace the mother. I embrace the creator, you know, the great mother, father, God, depending right. on how you want to term it. Um, and mother actually has also asked me to teach a year-long course called the Great Mother Love Way, uh, which we go very deep into connecting with her and learning more about some of the councils that she's on. We go very deep with that. So it, it's an ongoing adventure. What a journey. What a journey. Absolute wonderful journey. And, and now you get to focus on the Thousand Goddesses Gathering Global Grid. Yes. That is big. And it now it's, big. Even, it's gonna be bigger this year. Because that is the vision. It, it, it must be, you know. <laughs> well, we need it. We, the planet, the earth needs it. Oh, Humanity. us human beings, you know, all yeah. of the human beings need this. Still is needed. 
And so we did it again in 2018, had more time to plan for it. Uh, actually, a number of priestesses from your region in California came out, Celestine Starr, Christy Michaels, maybe some people know their names. And they led mini ceremonies as part of the larger high ceremony. And again, there was a massive white light that came in and it was actually videotaped that time. People caught it on their cameras. And again, brought forth a clearing of denser energies from the center of DC. And after that gathering in 2018, I was told on the spirit plane that I had fulfilled my obligations to organize an event on the Washington Mall. And for those who don't know what's involved with that, it's a lot of logistics and working with the park oh, service sure. and, oh. you know, being vetted by the park police and oh, yeah. all these restrictions, which makes sense. It makes sense, but it's a lot. And so I was told that after 2018, that it was time to focus on a global grid of ceremonies all over the world. And there was actually a global grid in 2018 also, because there were upwards of 85 different ceremonies around the world in Australia, New Zealand, in Thailand, et cetera, et cetera, Europe, North America, uh, that, that all joined together to weave a really powerful unified field of healing energy for the planet and it's for the humans it's it was it's all about helping to shift the energies on the planet to bring healing energies in it's about calling in the divine feminine and all of her beautiful aspects which are so needed right now well it's it is happening and yes it and, is. And, it, and it's also filtering out the negative um <laughs> testosterone level of aggression i mean it's still it, you know it's still happening but it is it's becoming you know more encompassing i believe well my lens on it is that there's a lot of transmutation going on right now of the denser energies and i refer to to a lot of these energies, not all of them, but a lot of them as the wounded masculine oh, that has totally. run amok. Yeah. And well, when you think from the very beginning, when a, a baby is born, a, ba a boy baby, you know, and the pain that they have to go through with their genital, you know, I mean, that's going to impact them from mm. the get go. No, it's true. It's very I, true. I mean, I, I mean, I was an RH baby. So I, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's um, when the father is positive and the, the mother's negative. And after the um, second child, because I have an older brother and sister, I'm the third. And what happens is the chemistry, my mother is fighting my chemistry and I'm fighting her chemistry oh after, after the, the cord is cut. And once the cord is cut, my blood is dying. So basically, I, they had to take me to have a blood transfusion immediately. Otherwise, oh I would gosh. have died. Oh so I know that's part of why I, I have my purpose in what, what I'm doing, because mm -hmm. I just have this, no matter what, you know, there's got to be positive and love. And um, there's always a solution. Mm -hmm. it, everything it's just being persistent and in loving and your words you know are mm -hmm. are the most important communication so but thank you for sharing that that um boy so leading from that we'll be going into another a thousand gathering global goddess yeah yeah, Thousand Goddesses Gathering Global Grid. It's yeah. happening here again on October 24th, all over the world. And for those in the Marin County area in Northern California, yes. Celestine Star is leading a ceremony that will be online. And if you go to our website for the Global Grid, which is 1000, the number 1000 and then goddesses.net, you can look at the map, there's an interactive map there and find that event and register by clicking on her event there. Great. And 
join in with the ceremony that she's leading. And people are very much invited to organize their own ceremonies. You know, you could do it by yourself. You can um, do it virtually with a couple of friends. I mean, clearly these are the times where we need to be careful, social distancing, but that doesn't mean that the unified field will be any bit diminished oh, by no. us doing this virtually. In it's fact, all energy. maybe on some levels it'll, it'll be more powerful because we have to focus more intensely. That's an interesting thought. I like the way you think there. Um, yeah, quite probably. I mean, that, that, <laughs> I mean, it really that's a good makes energetic you question. Focus. Yeah. You know? I, well, and one of the things, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off there. Oh, no, um, no. One of the things that I've come to realize, and this is, was actually shared to me by the high priestess who led the ceremony on the Washington Mall in 2016, is the level of ceremony that can be incredibly powerful has nothing to do with the numbers actually it has to do with how connected spiritually those within the ceremony are because, the frequency the yeah, because frequency if you have a big spirit team and you've been doing ceremony for a long time the ripple effect of the healing energies that you're going to be invoking within your ceremony are going to be that much more powerful if I can word it like that. And so, you know, there are many groups around the world of women who gather in sacred circles. Some of them do ceremony on a regular basis, whether it's for the full moon, new moon, right. equinox solstice. And the invitation is for all of them to join in with this. And then I want to add another piece to this. It's not just for women to gather solely as women. The invitation is for all of these groups, if they feel comfortable, to invite the masculine to participate. And I think that is so um, profound right now with yeah. you know, the shift that is happening. Um, you know, honoring the div you know the female divine in the masculine, mm -hmm. you know? and it's not mm -hmm. a threat. It's just it's actually making them more whole. Well, and I want to share something because I have an advisory council for this year, and one of the women is in New Zealand, and she organized the Thousand Goddesses Gathering event there in Auckland last year, and she's very connected. She's brilliant. I just love her to bits. And so she has a committee that she's brought together, and different people within the committee are going to be leading different pieces of their ceremony mm -hmm. on October 24th in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and a number of them are men. And she shared at our latest last meeting that she is so overjoyed to see the men starting to talk about what this means for them yes, and what the divine feminine means for them. And it's not just what they perceive outside of themselves as the divine feminine, yeah. but what they're starting to embrace within themselves that is, is the embodiment of the divine feminine, you know, more compassion, open-hearted, opening up to their intuition, being more receptive. Uh, and, and so, <laughs> yeah, and so Lisa Mullions uh, is the name of this New Zealand woman, and she just, she shared about this. It was so beautiful. It's and powerful. So it's because very we're, powerful. we're here as the, the feminine and the masculine. And, you know, we all need to work together to make mm -hmm. it whole, the mm -hmm. holistic part of the existence of humanity. It yeah. is so important. So that is absolutely, I love it. Uh, it's wonderful. No, it's really exciting. It's very, very exciting. And when we did the event on the Washington Mall the second time in 2018, it was very clear from the spirit planes from Mother Gaia, um, that we have a divine masculine team there and they all wore white they had orange sashes around their arms to distinguish themselves also orange was a significant spiritual color that was recommended by a teacher and they actually um we had four altars to the four directions and also the four different races of the world and one man was positioned at each altar as a guardian and then toward the end of the day's event, there was an actual divine masculine ceremony where they were invited to come forward. And a couple of them did it. We couldn't do all the men, but they represented all who were there. They 
had the, the choice of being quote unquote knighted and they had to agree to three vows to step into their divine masculine self. And the woman who led it is another woman from California and her husband was next to her, Diana and Michael Mikhelzadek, beautiful people. And they had been leading this ceremony, uh, knighting ceremony in California prior to that. <clears throat> and the three vows spoke to agreeing to stand beside the divine feminine to protect the earth and to protect all beings on earth. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember what they are. I don't have them right in front of me right now. One of them was to actually be willing to call other people around them on their actions if their actions were not embodying the divine masculine yeah. and balance. That was a big one. I've done yeah. this with a couple of different groups and some men were not willing to say, I'm going to call someone else on the carpet if they aren't showing up in a, a beautiful, positive healing way, supporting the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Uh, it, it's a really powerful ceremony to do. And when we did that on the Washington mall, so people started crying. Oh, I mean, one woman was sobbing and she went up to a couple of the men afterwards and kneeled on the ground and held their hands and thanked them yeah. profusely. I mean, there were tears in so many people's eyes because yeah. it was so profound uh, yeah well healing i mean we all have our healing to do and, oh yes and and i know that's that's why all this negative ugly behaviors are happening i mean i i can't watch the news um because there's just so many but and it just keeps going but you know it's all about healing it really is. And um, if only more people had that perspective, I think it would make it easier. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and really, what is surfacing that is so quote unquote ugly are the wounds. Yeah. Are, it's the cultural conditioning of centuries and centuries of ways yeah. of being that have not served our earth ever. Hmm. Uh, for the most part, when we're looking at the patterns of how much environmental destruction, Oh. the suppression of the feminine, you know, the slavery, the prostitution. Yeah. There's so many darker patterns that have surfaced over the past few thousand years because the divine feminine got suppressed. I mean, and those who know this history know about the temples that were destroyed and uh, the whole concept or reality, I'll word it that way, the reality that we have a planetary caretaker named Mother Gaia was made into fiction. Mm -hmm. And that's never been fiction. And indigenous peoples all over the world have yeah. never forgotten who she is and Earth. work with her. Yeah. She's always been here and she's a very powerful spiritual being. Uh, and so there's a great awakening right now going on that a lot of people are very aware of. And so what we're doing with this Thousand Goddesses Global Grid is it's really subtle activism. And it's working with ceremony to heal the earth, to bring the divine feminine energies in, to invoke them, to invoke even the divine masculine energies, because we're calling for healing and balance. We're mm -hmm. calling for the healing of the wounded hearts. And this energy from all these ceremonies is going to be woven together that weekend to shift the planet. Do and you, do, Sorry. Do you, yeah, think, do you think that really the most important key in this is actually every human being waking up to this um, reality and embracing it? Because, it, you know, I, I mean, I am in awe on how strong the Mother Earth is. I mean, I can't believe <laughs> what she has endured you know, with, especially like here in California and all, you know, what's going on all over, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, but it, it really takes the human being to embrace that, to honor, to honor that. Mm -hmm. And to revere her. Yeah. yeah. And to also remember how sacred each one of us are too, because yeah. that's one of the missing pieces here is all this cultural conditioning for so many centuries 
has not taught us to love ourselves, no. nor to realize how sacredly we're connected to the trees, the flowers, the bees, so many seen and unseen beings here on our planet that have evolved long before humans did are incredibly sacred. They're all reverberating with the energetics from creator and mother. And we have lost our way. A lot of people think God's out there. No, no. no. And everything that's no. here is to consume. It's just material oh, goods. And that's, oh, it no, couldn't no. be farther from the truth. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, all sacred all around us yeah yeah well, when i first got on this this um journey you know i i was taught that god was outside except until i went through some trauma at 17 and i started reading buddhism and that's when i i understood i didn't embrace it in totally but i understood that god is inside of yourself mm -hmm. you know it isn't outside it's it's but i didn't really totally get it to understand that you know the universe the energy that got you know mother god energy creates everything oh yeah and it's up to <laughs> us to to embrace it and you know appreciate it and honor it uh, uh, you know that's what we're called to do to help bring forth the new earth that's coming in right now yeah. and and this new earth is coming in in gangbusters <laughs> and you know mother told me in the end of december 2019 she said things are going to start rocking and rolling and that was long before i even had any glimpse of the pandemic and she actually asked me in the middle of february it was valentine's day to do a uh a Mother Gaia State of the Earth Address. I'm like, really? That's a big one, Mother. And it's on my YouTube channel. You can go to my YouTube oh, channel. Oh, yeah, no, that's cool. And so, and again, at that time, she wasn't saying to me pandemic, but she was definitely saying, these are times of great change. The humans have to wake up and they have to come home to her. And this is part of my work in a huge way is encouraging people to come home to her. And she's the ultimate mother. She's got so much love for us. I mean, I have some meditations on my website that are free and you can connect with her heart and it's so healing. She's the ultimate healer. Yeah. I mean, yeah, with absolutely. me and my lymphoma, I mean, I'm kind of a walking example. Yes, testimonial. So, yeah, yeah, testimonial. The path of surrender is not always the easiest path though, I have to say. <laughs> well, you know, I think any of our growth that happens. Um, I mean, I've, I have a plethora of, of stories myself that I've been through to get me to where I am in my life. And, you know, it's like the, you know, Michael Beckwith, Reverend Michael Beckwith says, it's the rub, it's the friction, you know, that makes you, mm -hmm. that, you know, that polishes you, what, however you want to, you know, say it, but it's, it's the challenges that, you know, help us grow. No, it's true. It's true. If we weren't being challenged, we wouldn't grow. Yeah, no. I mean, you know, so, and then you, you can appreciate it when you go through the depths. And, I, you know, I believe it's a lifelong journey. You know, things aren't going to be perfect and rosy all the time, because how would you appreciate them unless you had, you know, the negative and the positive energy? Although, you know what, Cheryl, I just want to speak this a little bit because there's actually a section in the Great Mother Bible where I was asking Mother, do we have to grow through suffering? And her response was actually no. Well, we I don't know like have the word to. suffering because I'm well, not Well, yeah, maybe that's but I know what you're word. saying. I totally understand. I mean, I mean, I'll share this with you. I just spent a week last week. I was really blessed to ask. I was asked to co-host a wild dolphin swim in Bimini in the Bahamas and we did it last week. So I'm still coming off the high of being around the dolphins oh. and being oh, zapped wonderful. by their really high energy. Oh, were you swimming with them? Yes. Oh, wonderful. And I really witnessed how much they love to be around us. Yes. I mean, if you are there the and you're receptive. Oh my God. Yeah, no, it was such a gift. It was such a gift. And so, you know, I, the little bit I know about dolphins and I'm reading a pretty comprehensive book about them right now is um 
they're at such a high energy and of course they grow and of course they're spiritual beings they're incredibly conscious beings they're very very intelligent beings but i think they've transcended or never needed to be in the place where we as humans yeah. have been and still are where we need to grow because of challenges you know that that's what propels us to really go inward and get stronger and connect more with the divine and our spirit teams and god mother choose your term uh you know they're already in the fifth dimension and beyond they really are it's so clear and actually most of the beings around us are already in the fifth dimension and as many are aware who have been studying spirituality we're going through a big shift right now of moving from the third to the fourth to the fifth dimension and as we shift into these higher frequencies we're going to be shedding a lot of the fear and the sense well, of that's that. a big that's a big one amongst humanity is fear. yeah and it's just and, and, false expectations appearing real uh, yeah know? yeah uh, and and i'm and i'm going to say something that's pretty out there but um people have no idea how much all the fear propaganda fear no. promulgation no. is because of extraterrestrials influencing us trying to control us with the fear through other humans and that oh, may go I way out that. of I yeah that's that. not news to you <laughs> that's not news because i i realized that that's why i don't watch the news you know because i know that it's all controlled by the one percent yeah it's and they're, they're influenced by others yeah oh, who are not necessarily in human form but I want to get back to the thousand goddesses yes, gathering the yes. grid because one of the things I haven't mentioned is that starting in when we did it in 2018 with that second event on the Washington Mall and then a grid of wonderful ceremonies, high ceremonies around the world, is we deeply amplified Gaia's oneness grid. And there are energetic grids of energy around the planet. And one of the the problem the foremost grid that we humans are being asked to focus on is the same grid and people call it by different names but i i was told to call it gaia's oneness grid and in doing that that actually helped to transmute a lot of heavier energies around the planet and we did the same thing last year 2019 but in 2018 several days right after that event i was given from the spirit plane a visualization um it's like a meditation visualization and it's available on my website for free to do whenever you want and it actually helps to continue this rolling amplification of gaia's oneness grid and uh so i i, I just want to really say that this is one of the reasons that mother is saying to me mayor that i need to continue organizing this because i can tell you that in april this spring you know early may i'm going eh, there's a lot of work i'm not really sure if i really want to do this and mother's like yes you are <laughs> <laughs> yes you are it needs to happen again and um and i also want to put a plug out there that we are very open to donations and sponsors to support this because oh, um yeah. Yeah. there is a fair amount of administrative support you know that goes behind this Great. Uh, yeah so but it's really about helping to bring forth the new earth, helping to heal what the dynamics are on the planet that have gotten so mired in the heavy energies. And even very significantly to invite the masculine forward to feel safe enough to heal their wounded masculine. And granted, that's not gonna happen all in one day, Right. but the thousand goddesses gathering global grid is an invitation and all are invited to participate and if you're a man watching this and you know some women in your life tell them about this and see if they'd be willing to organize a sacred circle with ceremony even if it's virtual there are ceremonial suggestions on the website you don't need to have any experience please don't feel deterred by that you know there's a lot of hand holding on that website um, and again, it's, it's the number 1000 and goddesses.net. <clears throat> well, this is actually probably one of the most important messages 
to go out because mm -hmm. of what has been going on, um, you know, with the pandemic and, um, you know, I, I look at it too as, as it's good because it's making people, it's forcing people to actually go within and, and, and take a look, you know, and, and that's what people need to, humans need to do to really, you know, especially when they're confined, <laughs> you no, know. It's true. And it's hard if you're not used to doing that. And then you have to really face your shadow. Yeah. And and the, we all, to, to evolve, to be a loving, whole human being, we all must do that. We have to. We have to. It's a process. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and not to be afraid of it. One of the messages that mother gave me, and I started putting some memes out on Facebook because, you know, and this was early on, I think it was in April or so, was I heard her so clearly say, uh, and she wanted me to put this out, that the humans have been put on a global timeout. <laughs> oh, right now. Yeah. yeah, we're still in it. Oh, yeah. but mother's been waiting for us to slow down. Yes. For 150 some years when the age of industrialization kicked in. Yeah. Then we started accelerating and accelerating as a, and, as a and then, Western society. And we really and, run them up. And then with the information, you know, period that's been going on, you know, the, the it's beyond the industrial. It's, it's, the computer industry. The yeah. I mean, it is it is way out there, and it's. And think how few of those people are connected to our planet. Uh, connected are not, to are not Mother Earth. because there is so much in their heads. And and that I'm really glad you said that because this journey that we're on, that we're being invited to really leap into, is that journey from our heads to our heart. Yeah, and have that balance. And have the balance. The mind, I say the mind and the heart connection. I've studied Deepak Chopra's for 30 some years. And I, you know, I love a lot of what he has to say. He's um, very wise. You, you know, and oh my goodness, what a time we're living in. I mean, I, I, I think it's actually a wonderful time. <laughs> I really do. These are exciting times, and we all I mean, chose to be here at this time on a yeah. Level. And even though, with all the, you know, the, like in Beirut, what happened? I mean, there's yeah. all the, and I don't want to focus on any of that stuff, but, you know, it's still the residual is still going on, but you know, it's also pulling people together. Well, and, and I want to speak that for a second, because one of the things that we're being called to do is to remember what it's like to be in community yeah. and to take care of each other in community. And because, especially in the United States, the sense of individualism oh, yeah. has really led us astray. Yeah. And it means that we can walk by someone who's homeless and ignore them oh. without recognizing that's another sacred being with the divine within them. And so part of what we're being asked to wake up to is we all must take care of each other. Yeah. And especially the way things are looking economically these days yeah. is we have to take care of each other. Yeah. And, and you know, the, I think the saddest part of that or the um, most unaware part of that is that a lot of people don't really love themselves unconditionally. Mm. so they disengage with other people because they don't have that inside themselves mm -hmm. and that's the woundedness that it's yes. really been inculcated within us absolutely it's uh it's a deep wound yeah it's a very deep wound but the work that you're doing mayor is beautiful and um so honored um you know and i'm I'm really happy that um, Celestine brought us together on this. Thank you. This is the time. It's timing. It's, it's all in This is the time. It's the time to bring in the softening. It's the time to bring in compassion. Absolutely. It's the time for us to heal our hearts and, and again, take care of each other. And again, I really want to stress that if you are in the region there in Northern California, Celestine Star is doing... 
a ceremony online that anybody can join. <clears throat> and you again, you can go to our website, a thousandgoddesses.net and find it on the interactive map on the homepage. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. Um, it, are there, is there anything else that you wanna share before we, we close on this wonderful yeah. conversation? Well, first of all, I'm so honored that, that you just leaped into this and said, let's just do it. But I want to I wanna leave people with the message that we are all so inherently loved. It's, it's profound how loved we are by Creator and by Mother Gaia. And so I just invite people to take that in and go outside and touch a tree and have your feet barefoot on the ground on good healthy grass and just call for that love to come into you to offer to bring the healing in because That's, we're all yeah. really being tested right now and we are surrounded by love and then allow that as you were just saying you know a lot of us don't know how to love ourselves well enough is to then take that love and know that you're a beautiful, beautiful, golden person of great divinity. Yes, yes, so, yes. And then it's e it's easy to give to others. From we, that place, yes. You let that flow from your, your mind-heart connection. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then I also say, and connected to mother's heart in the center of the planet. Of course. So, And again, there's a lot of information on my website. You can check out my books. They're all award-winning. Uh, this has been a pleasure. Thank you. Well, bless you and thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. We encourage you to apply the information you've learned with our wise guest to make your life better and make good changes. We appreciate you more than you know for being a part of our podcast. When you are moved or motivated, please let us know how the show influenced your life. Until next time, feel healthy and happy in your wealth, no matter where you are in your life.